want me to tell you what we're gonna we're thinking about doing. Okay. I would love I would love for you to tell me that. Yeah. I'm that sure. I'm sure. Fun. I'm sure they never they don't follow any of the news and go to sound bites. Um, we need just to keep it simple. We need to do things better um, on some of our coverages. We need to be more aggressive. If we're going to put them on the line, let's put them on the line being aggressive. That's going to, that's what I'm talking about. You can't, you can't put them on the line while you just, you know, the little ticky tack fouls. If you're going to put them on the line, we got to be, we got to do things more aggressive. I, I guess following maybe a better way to ask that would have been is do you, do you feel like during a playoff series, when, how much do you need to see of something before you decide, you know what, I'm tweaking? Like is, is, is one game enough to make you think that you need to adjust on something or do you want to see it over? Well, it all depends. If we've done it the way we're supposed to do it, um, then you have to, then you have to do a, a little bit of a tweak. Uh, but you also have to take into consideration you've done things um, for the entire season. And the, if it's worked, you've continued to do it. And our defense have, has been pretty good over the last three and a half months. I think we're top, you know, top 10. You know, there's, that, there's games where we didn't, wasn't as good, but we've been pretty good. Last game, they're a good team. I mean, like I, I keep saying that they are, they got a lot of good players that have great experience and then they, they're able to see things um, before it happens, and and that happens over time. I can go back to every single one of their players and and look back when they were a lot younger. They weren't reading the game. Uh, same goes for our guys. When you when you see it enough, you can read and react much quicker. And our guys are we're getting better, but we're not exactly where we need to be. But we we make we we'll make a few adjustments. And we have, and we'll see how it goes in, in, in game in game two. We know we know we have to play better. We're not happy just to be in a, a, a couple possession game in the last couple of minutes of the game. We want to we come into these games. We're putting everything we have into to get a win, and there's no difference from game to game adjustments. Scott. Hey, Scott, uh, today's the one year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd. I'm wondering if you talked to the guys today about practice, about um, his death and, and, and what the past year has been like. Uh, we haven't talked about it today, but we've talked about it enough throughout the throughout the year. And it's it wasn't a good day then. It's not a good day now. Uh, but I'm also we need to be better. We need to be better as as a, as a country. And, and I, I like I like our organization. I'm proud of them, all the guys and everybody in our organization. I'm proud of us that we've we've stepped up and continue to try to 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 make to make uh, change happen. And and Brad and Russell down the line, everybody. Uh, Monumental Sports. They I really believe in they believe in uh, making making a difference and and changing the social injustices or it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. We shouldn't be talking about it. It's, it's, there's no, to me, there's no, there's, there should be no debate on racial inequality. There should be no debate. It should not be in even a discussion. And, and for us to have that discussion, that means we still have a lot of work to do. And, and we have to continue to strive to be better as, as people for one another. And Scott, I know you're focused on game two, but it was announced for game three at Capital One Arena. It's going up to 50% capacity, more fans in the stands. I mean, hearing that news and knowing you're going to have more fans behind your back uh, for your home games in the playoffs, what's that mean to you? It means a lot. Uh, just from a, I mean, if you look at it from our basketball point of view, it's great that we have more fans in the building, but for to really what's more important, it means a lot to the, we're starting to get back to being normal. We, the world needs it. We all need it. The country needs it. Our city needs it. Our vendors, our restaurants, our ushers, that we all need to be moving in that direction. So this is a, definitely a, another, another step in the right direction. I'm, I'm proud of the, 
we're we're in this position. One, we're in the playoffs. We got a chance to play in front of, you know, 5,000 fans the first couple of games. And now it's up to 10,000. That's to me, that's really, really good. You know, even last game in Philadelphia, I don't know how many they ended up with, but it just it feels good. It feels good. Even if you're, you're getting heckled and harassed throughout the game, I miss it. Our players miss it. I just, I just miss having the, the fans because that's what the game is about. Just the, Fans want to see two teams competing at a high level, and they're going to be able to see that. Uh, more of our fans are going to be able to see that in person. That's awesome. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Chase. Hey, Scott. Um, Dwight Howard had nine screen assists in game one. Uh, they led to, to 20 points. W what can you guys do to manage that better in game two? Um. Were they legal screens? <laughs> some of them. Okay. Well, some of the things that we can't control, but we got to do a better job of fighting through them. And um, I know we've asked you quite a bit about Tobias Harris, but looking back, it seemed like he was particularly dangerous on catch and goes. Um, what, what can you guys do to mitigate that? Well, he, well, well he's good. He's good at a lot of different areas of the floor, and he's, he has a he's he's a triple threat. He can, and not only in those triple threat opportunities, he can he can shoot three. So you got to be well aware of that. And he can catch and go. He can make passes. He can put it on the floor as well as anybody at that position. He's a high level offensive player. He's a high level player. Period. He can he can do just about everything on the floor, both ends of the floor. Uh, it, 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 we looked at enough clips throughout the year of the other three games we played them. And, and then last season, we, we just, I mean, he's, he's, he's not easy to guard. I mean, it's not, it's not all Rui. We've all had opportunities, but our defense needs to be better. Uh, being able to react quicker when he does get those catch and goes blow bys and, and hopefully next game that we will. I thought we did a, a better, a better half, better job in the first half, but you know he didn't get as many opportunities also because they were looking to get in B uh, more touches. Neil, hey Scott, you were alluding it to it a little bit yesterday about during your film session. You know, guys were stepping up and saying, you know, okay, this needs to be done, this needs to be done. Some you know sense of accountability. Who is leading that charge and, you know, what's the message that they're trying to get across? Well, we're, we're all, I don't go into, I don't need to go into detail who speaks up, but we have, we have some really good veterans that understand, and, but we also have other guys that want to get better. So they're asking, they're asking very, very thought provoking questions. And th those are great. Those are great things to have when you're the coach and you see that and you just let it, you let it take place. You don't try to manipulate it or you just let it, let it flow. And like I said, we got, we got guys, all of our guys are about the right things. And, you know, when you don't play, sometimes it's hard to be a part of it or sometimes you don't feel like you are a part of it, but even the guys that don't play that they, they're very important to our, to our decision making, but we have a general philosophies on what we want to do. And there's obviously wiggle room to improve on and, 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 and tweak a little bit, but our veterans do a good job of talking. I obviously have my, my say is involved in it as well, but I, I believe in trying to figure out things together. I don't need to, I don't, I'm not going to tell you who, who does what and, and how they do it and how they say it. Those are, those are privileged to be in our, we keep it in, we keep it in the locker room. When uh, Daniel Gafford first got here, you, you mentioned how you hadn't played with a lob threat like him at the NBA level. Um, what's it been like uh, figuring out where he likes his, his lobs thrown? And, and do you, did you have any experience at any other setting to kind of pull from in that regard? Uh, not really. I didn't, I don't think in my whole life I've ever played with anybody I can, I can throw a lob to. Uh, Maybe Pat Young in college, 
but other than that, nobody really. Um, but it's it's always special when you have an athlete like that. He's able to just you know kind of he's a quick jumper. You know he has long arms. Uh, he's kind of able to just save you in a lot of ways and just catch the ball and finish. You know, and that's that's a gift of his more or less than than mine or the passer. You know, he just he's very gifted with his uh, his athletic ability. Uh, use it to his advantage, you know. So for me, it's just trying to get it up near the rim a little bit higher and, uh, you know, away from the defenders, and he'll take care of the rest. And uh, Dwight Howard had nine screen assists in, in game one. Uh, he did a good job getting their players open. How, how do you guys deal with that moving forward in this series? Oh, he's a good screener. Uh, you know, he's a big physical specimen. He's a physical guy by nature, and, you know, he's the same way on the court. You know, he's his biggest thing. Is to get guys open. You know, he had that, that same mentality when he was here for his brief stint, too. So, uh, you know, us as guards, we got to understand that, continue to fight through, uh, shoot the gap sometimes or trail over, and maybe even take a foul here and there and just, you know, be aggressive at all times. Malika. Hey, Brad, I'm wondering if that, that kid in the candy store mentality that you talked about, just having the perspective of not being here for a couple of years and now being healthy, I'm wondering if that aids you in any way when now you need to make adjustments or you have a loss or things like that, if, if that helps you to lock into those things even more potentially. Oh, for sure. I mean, because uh, everybody wants to be a part of playoff basketball. You know, at this, at this realm, uh, at this stage of the, of the year, everybody's fighting for the same thing. Everybody wants to win. Uh, it's only one trophy that gets handed out, you know, so uh, I embrace that, you know, it's a fun process. Uh, like I said, I haven't been here in a long time. So uh, just being in this type of uh, intense game, this intense atmosphere is always, it's always propelled my game. It always like kind of gives me a, a leverage up a little bit more boost of confidence to be on this stage. Uh, and, you know, that's just something that we just, we embrace. I definitely embrace it. And that's where the mentality comes from. So when it comes to making adjustments and everything like that, uh, I'm, I'm able to be more locked in because, you know, I enjoy it. I embrace every every single moment of the process. Is there anything that surprised you or you're like, nah, this is like riding a bike. I know this is this is my element. No, this is, you know, I felt I was like, this is where I belong. This is this is the type of basketball I need to be playing. Uh, this is the stage I want to be on. This is the stage we all deserve to be on. And, um, you know, that's something that I was happy about, you know, and, it, and it's, it's definitely it's an unbelievable feeling to be, you know, be back on this on this platform and, and hopefully we can continue to make noise. we got a big one tomorrow um, and they never get easier. And I think that's another thing I love. They just get harder and harder, you know, as you continue to play these teams. So yeah, I definitely, I'm, I'm looking forward to each and every game. Thank you. Yep. Scott. Hey Brad, you guys have been going on like a torrid pace. I feel like the last couple of weeks, this team's been basically playing every other day and having this extra day of rest uh, going into game two. How can that be beneficial for you guys? Uh, I mean, it's it's always beneficial. I mean, it's beneficial to everybody at this point of the year. Uh, I think for the last month and a half, we played every other day. And, uh, you know, before this game, we actually had two days off. And now we have another two or three days off. And it's, it's beneficial for sure. You know, you're able to recoup. Your body's able to, you know, heal and, and uh, you know, recover in, in the ways it needs to. And then on top of that, we're able to make our proper adjustments, you know, continue to watch film and see where we can get better as a team, where we can stop them. <laughs> And, uh, and and it's, it's been it's been very beneficial for us, for sure. You know, we've been, like like I said, playing every other day, so it's always good to get extra days rest. Hey, I want to ask you, uh, today's the one-year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, a day of reflection and, and kind of looking back. How have you kind of remembered this day, and have you talked to teammates about it today? No, we haven't had a chance to talk about it, uh, but as, we, as I reflect on it, it's, it's definitely, it's crazy to see as fast how, a year went by, you know, that quick. Um, and it definitely, it brings back the, the crazy, you know, just silence around the world, you know, the feeling of numbness of the event and, um, and everything that we're trying to do and to continue to push forward, you know, to this day, you know, it, his name doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't go un, unnoticed, you know, we, we take pride in it, you know, um, you know, he was kind of a martyr in a lot of ways and uh, it's unfortunate in his, in his, stance, but, you know, I think us as Americans and as people, we have to be better um, and continue to push for, for better equality and for, uh, you know, better police brutality than what we've, what we've been facing. Um, so, uh, obviously, the fight continues to be pushed. Uh, and today remarks an unbelievable day, but, you know, it's never unforgotten.
Thanks, Brad. Yeah. Mark. Bradley, could you talk a little bit about, you know, the, the difficulties that it's posed a guy the size of Simmons when he's he's defending uh, he's defending you? Uh, he's six ten. I'm six three. So I, I think that can I think that's pretty simple. I mean he's a he's a big guy. He's uh and he plays guard, so it's not like he's a you know power forward or a center guard me. He's very mobile, agile, and he's strong. So uh, I think that propels him. I think he, and the fact that he wants to play defense, you know, he's a willing defender. So you don't always see that. You know, he uses it to his advantage. He's very strong. Uh, but that's what he does. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Brad. Hey, Brad, just, just following up on that, you, you guys had, I think it was 76 or 78 points in the paint against yeah. Philly and they have, great long defenders on the perimeter and they have been beat in the middle beyond just kind of a mentality of we want to attack what allowed you guys to actually be successful in attacking a defense that's really good and normally does not give up that many points to the paint uh i mean i think it starts on our defensive end getting stops you know a lot of that comes from us getting out in transition we know they like to play a little slower uh, Ben can get out in transition, but more than half the time, we know they love to, you know, kind of slow it down and throw the ball in. But for us, it's, it's, if, as long as we get those stops, we get out in transition, those points become easier for us. Um, we know that they're they're athletic, they're long, but, you know, we, we don't fear that. You know, we go and attack just like they attack us. Um, and we try to get their guys in foul trouble. You know, that's that's our biggest, our biggest thing. You know, we don't shy away from anything. We understand that that's been successful for us. So we're not, we're not going away from it. We're going to continue to attack the paint. Um, you know, and then when we attack, you know, that, that creates better opportunity for us on the three point line. You see DB was able to get hot the other night, um, just off some penetration. So, you know, that's, that's what we need, you know, and we're going to continue to do it. Yeah. Lauren. Hey Bradley, I hope you're doing well. Um, another question about another six or defender. Um, what were your impressions going up against Matisse Thibel? It's, he's just a second year player and, and obviously has shown some some really exciting stuff. So just as an appreciator of the game, what have you made of him so far? Uh, I mean, he's very similar to Ben. I mean, he's, he's very, he's tall, he's, he has long arms, uh, he's physical, and he's a willing defender. He, I mean, I think that's what separates a lot of guys in the league. Not a, you know, he takes pride in defending. You know, he doesn't care about what happens on offense. and. If he's involved, if he gets shots, you know, his job is to go out there and keep me from doing what I do. So, you know, I respect that. Uh, you know, he goes out and competes at a high level. I mean, to see him only in the second year and, um, you know, to be a willing defender as he is, that's always a good sign. It's his, his trajectory it can only go up. Uh, but I definitely try to make it as tough on him as possible, make him work and, and, uh, and, and try to move him and my big screen him as much as possible. Too. Thank you. Yeah. Christos? Hey, Brad, hope you are doing well. Uh, how could you describe the mood in the locker room ahead of the game, too, in Philly? And also, as the leader of this team, how responsible do you feel to have to keep your uh, your teammates motivated with your speeches and with your actions as a leader? Christos, we are ready to go for tomorrow. I promise you. Uh, I mean, we're all positive. Nobody's, I mean, obviously. We understand we're down one, but, you know, we're not beating ourselves up. We're not in a slump. You know, we're not down, you know, so it's a long series. Uh, you know, we just take it a game at a time and we got one tomorrow. We will be ready. You know, we, we had a really good practice today, a good practice yesterday. Uh, watch some film and see where we, got, where we can get better on both ends. And we just got to put it into practice tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to it. Neil. Hey, Brad, going off of that a little bit, does your leadership change at all in the playoffs? Obviously, this is the first time, you know, you're in this big time leadership role uh, in the playoffs and maybe has, you know, Russ helped you in that role at all? Uh, I mean, it doesn't necessarily change. I think the only thing that changes is your intensity. It's still a game that you play. Um, the stakes are higher, obviously, but uh, the biggest thing is a leader, you know, you obviously have to you know, talk to talk and walk it. You got to obviously perform and come out and be ready to go. Uh, be confident on the floor at all times. Understand that every possession is valuable. Um, and and just go from there. You know, I don't, me personally, I don't try to make it, make myself bigger than the game or make anything bigger than 
it's a game, you know, it's, it's another game we play. And I just try to keep it in that realm and keep myself having fun. You know, I think a lot of times we put a lot of pressure in those moments on ourselves and, you know, we become tight and tense, you know, I'd like to be free and relaxed and, and enjoy every single moment of, of, of the game that we're playing in. So, uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's me.